Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trophinet and welcome back to The Witcher 3 on the Death March difficulty. We're back in the uh, Hearts of Stone expansion and we kind of tried to lure old geared Von Everek into a trap by luring him to the Temple of Lilvani. Well, we actually don't know if it's a trap because, uh, well, we had to do that from uh, Gonter Udim, our mystery man, our man of uh, Master of Mirrors, Master Mirror. And uh, we had also the optional objective that we needed to talk to Shawnee first. The man that we met that knew where All Geared was told us to go meet Shawnee first. But I want to quickly say something else first. I have uh, someone in the comments was uh, talking about that I made some wrong choices. I just want to remember everybody about the fact that I'm playing this blindly. The uh, expansions, I haven't played the expansions yet, so this is my first time playing. I'm not going to have all the answers and I'm probably not going to make all the right decisions. But I'm going to try to do so as I see fit. But with that said, let's head into uh, Shawnee's clinic again. She's probably upstairs again. Yeah, there we go. Hello Shawnee, why are you on the floor? Shawnee. Yeah. Oh, Geralt, good thing you're here. Romance music, for some reason. Are you leaving? What happened? Somebody break in? This? Uh, no, just getting ready to move. Oh, where what? are you going? When, when, where to? Not what I wanted to talk to you about. Or at least not own me, but... What's wrong, Shani? Tell us. I'm leaving. Geralt. The Eastern Front beckons. I'm Kedwin bound. Okay then, that's sudden. Is that because of what happened between us? Never mentioned you'd be moving. Any intention to either. I didn't know I would be. Found out this morning. Two oh yeah, because she's my door, part of the army. The needs me again. Yeah, there Couldn't we go. Turn him down. Just say no. Uh, perhaps I could have. But I didn't want to. Treating the ill and wounded, it's my calling. No place I'm needed more than at the front. That's also right. Okay. Um, well, since we're in a pretty good relation right now, a relationship right now with Jennifer, I don't see the point in, tell her, in telling Shawnee not to go anywhere, so uh, I see. I understand. Any chance we'll see each other again? Someday, I'm sure. Yeah, we'll bump into each other again. Learn anything about Olgird? So, learn anything about Olgird? Well, I abandoned the books quickly. Decided that if I was going to learn the truth, I'd need to find someone who knows it. Okay. Find anyone? Turned like out his I brother? To look far. A colleague at the academy, an assistant to Professor Premathine Shakeslock, claims Olgird von Everick met with the professor multiple times. Premathine Shakeslock. Olgird. Asked the professor to do some research. Professor got so worked up doing it, he went daffy. Started jealously guarding his notes. Wouldn't even let his assistant look at them. The professor, where'll I find him? Here in Oxenfurt. Cloistered inside his house on academy grounds. Mage hunters guard his door. Oh, can we finally ac access the academy? Why are the mage hunters mage there? Mage hunters at the door. He under house arrest? I can't say, really. Some of the faculty think him a traitor. Say he sold out to the hunters for a hefty pouch of gold. The assistant, on the other hand, insists the professor wants him there to protect him. I don't know what from. What's your guess? He's certainly useful to them. A specialist in black magic and the occult? Must be a trove of knowledge. If he's really gone off his nutter, I wouldn't be surprised to see them using him. Okay then, so we might have to rescue him out of there. Well, uh, I guess we're gonna have to see this professor then. Need to talk to this professor. We'll professor Shakeslock. Redanian guards all over the academy. Doubt you'll get in alone. Okay. Guards have never stopped me. You know that. Mm. Wound these, and I'll have to patch them up. Besides, That's also true. run into a friend. Get inside free and easy. Okay then. Whatever would that friend be? Okay, Shawnee, lead the way. One last uh, quest together, probably. Professor Shakeslock, is that a a mix of Shakespeare and Sherlock? Shakeslock. So how are things at the academy Ooh. these days? You mean since Radovid shut it down? I mean, is it well guarded? Might be all it is. Many of the faculty fled to the far north. 
The braver ones stayed, but assumed the guises of tailors and laundresses. Why? Just curious. Scholars seem to have adopted mage tactics. They in the same bind? So the Eastern Front, and then? Depends where they send me. Wherever it is, take care of yourself. Always do. So don't worry. I think we'll always worry about you, Shani. But look at that. I think I've been here before, but you couldn't go beyond those gates over there because the guards were uh, well guarding them. And you couldn't get through. So, okay. Over there then. Hello, guards. Can you open the door for us? Halt! By order of King Radovid, no one's allowed inside the academy. Uh, you mean the, the dead no King one Radovid? Means no one. See, you've become quite the stickler, Norbert. You were much kinder when I was patching you up. By the way, how's your knee? Fine. Dandy. As if no arrow ever struck it. Consider yourself a lucky man. Because if I'd not decided to operate, you'd be a cripple to the end of your days. <clears throat> Bruno, eh? Maybe we ought to her in. Oh, it's sleeping. She's a decent lass. Not like to steal nothing. And your king is dead. Hmm. He's dead. All right. But alone. Which will draw too much attention. I'd rather not get shite from the captain on his account. Here's what we'll do. I'll go in, then help you sneak in around the back. Uh, they're standing oh. right over there. No, but I'll figure something out. Usually aren't nearly as many guards on the riverside. Agreed. All I right. can't believe those guards didn't hear you there. I mean, they're standing three meters from us. Okay, enter the academy grounds. It's funny that you could leave this quest right now and just leave Shawnee inside of the, the grounds over there. Let's see, the riverside. Um, I could jump down, I guess. Although that's probably a bad idea. Could I? Could I? Let's do it. Let's do it. There we go. Shortcut. So the riverside doesn't have as many guards. If I would be able to jump on top of that right now. Come on, Geralt. It's not that steep. God damn it. Okay, I'll have to find a spot a bit more up shore. Let's see if I can't. Yeah, over here. Yeah, okay, I'm out. Freedom! And there's. Of course there are. Of course there's drowners here. And that's all the drowners. So, this is the wall. It doesn't look like I can easily access that. Ooh, it's this. No, okay, nothing. Let's see. Can we... Okay. Cutscene. Sometime later, it's Geralt. dark already. Psst. Are you there? Yeah, and suddenly, a rope. Grab the line. Yeah. He must have seen that before, right? Where'd you get the rope? Long story. But we've done well. Professor Shakeslock's house is at the end of this street. The okay, then. The guard the door. Doubt I'll be able to sweet-talk them. Been a huge help already, Shani. Thanks. It was nothing. Really. You'd have done the same for me. That's true. If you wish to see me again before I go, I'll be at home. Packing will take some time yet. Alright. Be seeing you. Yeah, we'll be sure to do that, Shani. We'd love to see you again. Okay, and the Professor shakes Locke's house. Do need to be careful because of the witch hunters, probably. Can't really. Okay, never mind. So apparently, those witch hunters don't really. No, for fuck. Okay. Now I've done it. Oh, shit! Shit, shit, shit. So that's the archer. There we go. And he's gonna kill both of them, probably. Hello, sir. Okay. Didn't expect I needed to uh, kill them, but hey. Uh, maybe I'll 
I'll get those swords. They look fancy. Maybe I can uh, dismantle them for something nice. Ooh, tracking bolts. Okay, that's that, I suppose. I can get up here. And I'm curious, so... God damn it. Use the ladder. Why is everything axe? Ah, oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah, there we go. I'm just gonna eat a few things in the meantime. Let's see if there's anything of interest in here. Beyond she. Oh, don't, don't walk out now. Let's drop down again. And drop down again. Let's see, so the house is over here on the left. The academy is actually a pretty nice place. Uh, maybe I should check out the rest of this place as well now that we're here. Because I'm doubting that we'll get full access after this, so might as well. Check out any loot here. There we go. Any chests here? Maybe I'm going uh, a bit too fast. I'm gonna guess this isn't here just for show. And then I'm gonna have to be able to uh, go up here without... Because I'm not gonna be able to enter the house, I mean. And I'm gonna be able to do that like this! Oh, no, 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 no. Be careful, be careful. Yeah, okay, there we go. So now this is a door, so let's go inside. Hi! Uh-oh. What the hell is that? What the hell was that? Did that kind of break his house, or what was that? Um, yeah, there's stuff down here. Hello? Oh. Shattered mirror. No sign of impact. Probably not an accident. Shattered by a sound, maybe. Someone look in it and scream? Jillian Alboco's lesser key. Tomes about demons. Dusty as they come. The essence of evil is to cause suffering. There exists many varieties of suffering. From common corporeal pain through the rarefied torment of the psyche to deep wounds dealt to the soul. Whence then does evil arise? Does it appear on its own, or does it only spread when conditions are ripe? And finally, the most important question, how can evil be defeated? Most believe evil has always existed, for none remember a time when it did not. Yet is that sufficient proof? I dare to doubt it, for I am a scholar, and the essence of scholarship is to question all hypotheses until they have been rigorously proven. The appearance of evil is closely tied to the existence of good, its opposite and an antithesis. Antithesis? Good without evil is dimensionless, and therefore imperceptible. Evil, then, is an integral part of our lives. Evil wears many faces and appears in many different forms. One of them wears the skin of flesh. This evil incarnated as man travels the world, sowing death and suffering. Such evil is devious and difficult to discern. We usually only note its presence when it is already too late. In my scholarly wanderings through, through the myths and legends of a great many cultures, I've come across descriptions of a certain individual which all display a striking similarity. I do not mean in terms of this individual's outer appearance or name, but of his modus operandi. This evil works through trickery, tempting at first with the offer of something seemingly good. The price one must pay for this object of temptation, however, is enormous and non-refundable and the promised good often contains horrifying hooks and treacherous traps. Beware then of any who pro promise the impossible, for such can only be delivered through the machinations of evil." Well, that's a pretty clear description of uh, Gontaro Dim. And I must say, maybe, well, maybe Kiss and Run, the guy that told me I made a wrong decision, was right. But hey, I guess we'll see about that now, shall we? Let's go downstairs. Franco, is that you? Leave the bedpan in the usual spot. Is he blind? I shall be eating today. Professor Shakeslock. Who the blazes? Yeah, he's blind. How'd you get it? Get out. 
I know nothing. Don't wish to know anything. Understand? No, no, no. Out! Not gonna hurt you. That demon sent you. I'm sure of it. Okay, what demon? What demon? Feigned ignorance. <laughs> Please, you know. He's talking about going through a dim. Yeah. Dim. Okay. Evil incarnate. He didn't send me, but he is why I'm here. I'm a witcher. <laughs> a mutant. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Is that a house okay. crashing down? You a prisoner here? Why are there guards outside your door? You a prisoner? Protective custody. That's the phrase. Protective. <laughs> when I cannot decide my own fate, cannot breathe without their permission. What do they want from you? You may not be aware, but I am one of the foremost experts on the occult. Living experts, that is. My mentor was the outstanding Professor Lionel Van... And you're cooperating with the witch hunters now? Cooperating? <laughs> As if I had a choice. They're ignorant, but not enough to ignore what I know about magic, witches, sorceresses, what have you. Knowledge they use for barbaric ends, but that's beyond my control. Yeah, no, your enemy, I can get behind that, so that's understandable why they kept them alive. But we came to talk. I came here because I need information. Think you might be the only man who has it. Hmm. A witcher. He's inside and of that same pentagram fear. again. I'm hardly a post-conjunction creature. What did all geared Same as all geared you. He probably teached him that. Told him that. Curse the day I first set eyes upon the man. He appeared at my doorstep one day, offering a sack of gold were I only to find out who Gontaro Dim is and how to get rid of him. I agreed. Such matters are my speciality. And I needed the coin. I pored over countless tomes, delved into obscure incidents and analyzed folk legends. I went so far as to travel to Nilfgaard, the library there, where at last I hit upon the mysterious entity's trail. There are records of encounters dating back thousands of years in many cultures under many names, but always as evil incarnate. In this land, we call him Gaunter Odim. At times, Master Mirror, or the Man of Glass. The Man of Glass. That's what the Black Cat and Dog warned us about. Yeah, I learned a great deal. For example, that he plays with his victims. And thrives on pacts above all else. Seemingly harmless contracts, which drive their parties to madness. Okay. So yeah, I noticed that already. He's inside of the same protective circle that Old Geard was in in the memories. But uh, what else do you know about him? Know anything else about the man? Gaunter Odim is no man. He is evil. Evil which assumes various forms. Forget about him or die. You're alive. Alive? Yet I live in constant fear, born of what I've learned about him. Okay, and the magic circle? What's with the surroundings? These runes, what do they mean? They protect me. Here, evil cannot touch me. And that's and why his food was brought to him. Himself. Paid me a visit once. Fascinating meeting that was. I was blind already, but saw him clearly. Interesting. He smiled at me. Said he was honored I'd taken such an interest in him. He wished to thank me and explained he'd taken a similar interest me. He drew the circle and said I'd be safe within it. His way of repaying me, you see. Ever tried to leave it? If you'd heard how he said it, you'd be as certain as I am what leaving would bring. Probably the house crashing down on your face, but... So Old Geard make one of these pacts with him. I think we kind of already assumed that, right? Old Geard sign one of these pacts with him. Brilliant deduction. But have you guessed why? You must know that he came from a wealthy, influential line. He must have, if the family of his betrothed accepted him. Yet did you know, his fortune soured. He himself became an outcast, impoverished. Iris' family, a powerful house, could not accept this. Would not marry their daughter to a nobody. Yes, indeed. We all saw all that. To elope. The further away, the better. Yet Iris refused to cut her family ties. Quite the predicament. Indeed. Their luck turned yet darker 
when a wandering witch mentioned a solution. A man who would grant any wish. His name, Master Mirror. The rest follows naturally. All geared and all dim. A meeting at a crossroads. A wish. A pact signed in blood. And a price to be paid. All geared was to sacrifice one he loved. Old Dim delights in difficult choices. He knew All Geared loved two in this world. His betrothed and his brother, Vladimir. He killed his brother brother? And soon thereafter married his beloved Iris. His fortune restored. So Vladimir wasn't killed by a bunch of Oh, that explains a lot actually. So Vladimir All Geared killed Vladimir. So did All Geared kill his own brother? No, oh no. Deduce, Witcher. Oh, Dim acts directly or indirectly. Hmm? Olgird merely signed the blood letter. The next day, his brother was dead. Yeah, okay. So that's why that all suddenly changed. And you know all this from Olgird, that would be weird. That. He had to. How else was I to diagnose his case? Okay. It sound like an illness. It is worse. Many illnesses are treatable, but play with evil, and medicine can be much harder to find. Okay. Keep wondering why this, this bit is optional, because it's pretty cool. The explanation is astonishing. So, uh, Old Geard wanted to break his pact. Why was Old Geard out to get rid of Odim? He'd gotten what he wanted. Had he? <laughs> his heart had turned cold as ice. His feelings for his wife, for whom he'd sacrificed his brother, had withered. He'd lost all he'd loved. Had he wanted any of this? No. Or Dim grants what you wish, not what you want. That's a quote. All who sign a pact learn the difference. You die by it. Okay. No, get rid of him. Kill him, you mean? Stop looking at the Kill ceiling. Evil? <laughs> no. Yet the annals tell of a man who dissolved his pact by defeating Old Dim at his own game. Meaning? Old Dim wields contracts, word traps, duels of wits. Challenge him to such a duel. He'll agree and can be beaten. But remember, there is only ever one stake. The sole thing he truly desires. Human souls. Looks like I'm going to have to make a few more bad decisions. Okay, and how can I get rid of the mark on my face? Odim left a mark on my face. Any way to get it off? A mark? No mention in the tones. Strange. Unless... Unless it will disappear once your pact is fulfilled. If Automatically, I then. Him, end the pact that way. Will it go away? That I do not know. The one man who succeeded bore no mark. Okay then, thanks for your help anyways, thanks. Dr. Shakespeare. lot. Good. Very good. Ah, oh, to feel useful after so many years locked up, living in fear. Why, it's pleasant itself. And now he's gonna die. Yeah, he's gonna die. And he's outside the circle. Wow. Holy shit. Yeah, going through a dim is an asshole. Outside the circle and then dead. Wow, snapped his neck right on that casket over there. Key to Professor Shakespeare's home, so that's probably what we need to get out. And I'm gonna read the journal as well. Because he was guarding those, if I remember. Kashani told us that. My notes and observations. The circle Udim created terrifies me. I cannot see it, but I know it is there. I know no name for the sense which, which, with which I perceive it, but when I, when I near its bounds, strange shivers shoot down my spine. This is not pain, but something that stands my hair on edge like a hedgehog's quivers. A month has passed, and I still, s wow, a month has passed, and still I stay within the runic circle. Nightmares prey on me more and more. I've come to fear sleep. I know not how long I can withstand this. I dreamt I had a daughter. This was strange, for I've never had children. Yet one came to me in my sleep. 
She was no older than ten, she called me daddy and loved me deeply. I could see it in her eyes. The strangest part of all it was that I also burned for her with a great paternal love. Can one possibly dream of someone who does not exist? Can one love such a one? I no longer fear sleep, perhaps Odim has decided to give me peace. I have no desire to change his mind. My dreams of Amelie give me great joy. My daughter is a good and clever girl. I believe she will grow into a beautiful woman. A shame she exists only in my dreams. Not only do I no longer fear sleep, but now I cannot wait for the moment in which it comes. What a fantastic transformation. If nothing changes, I shall soon try to leave the circle. I know now why I dreamt for weeks of the child I never had. It was his doing. This night, my daughter died. She caught a strange illness which pocked her whole body with hideous oozing sores. She cried, begging me to help. I could, could do nothing. She died in my arms. I awoke soaked in sweat. I remain a wreck. My mind tattered. Three months have passed since Amelie's death. Jesus Christ, he has been in that circle for five months then? My heart still bleeds and horrifying visions plague my every moment. I'm a blind man who wishes he saw nothing for utter blindness would be a relief compared to these tormenting visions. I cannot persevere much longer. I have become a deeply unhappy old man. I have now lived within the magic circle for a year. Thoughts of suicide haunt my mind ever more often. It would be so simple. I need but to step outside the runes. Over a year in that circle. Jesus Christ. Poor man, I think he's kind of rid of his curse now. I'd like to think so anyway. Let's open the door and get out of here. There we go. And uh, well, next up is uh, meeting all geared at the Temple of Lilvani. So when uh, we get back, I'm gonna go do that. So, uh, but beforehand, I'm gonna take a little break. So thank you guys enormously for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, don't forget to like it right here on YouTube. And if you haven't already, don't forget to give it a thought to subscribe to my channel, because I'd really appreciate any support you guys can give me. So thanks again enormously for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video or series. Goodbye!